So now, did you also notice the terrain no longer looks square? You don't really see the corners like we did before. So it makes it look more like a real world. Now the thing I don't like is when you get to an edge, it's still bouncing around as if it's hitting the end of the world. I'm sorry, but right now in Star Logo, you are not able to go past the edge of the terrain, even though we've given the illusion that there's more space. So I think it makes the game look bigger, but unfortunately you can't go beyond that game world. Still, it does qualify as a trick, and I bet you didn't know it before today. So is there anything else I could show in the next few minutes to expand this idea? Well, to me, it sort of appeared like that was the ground, but everything, even though this is a 3D game and the objects appear 3D, did you notice how all the objects are only moving left and right? They're only moving on that flat plane. They're all at the same place vertically. What if we want to make an ocean game where we have top of the ocean and bottom of the ocean and we want these things to be fish all in between. Now to really give that sense, let's change the shape of the other characters. Where are those created? 200 other characters. I'm gonna change the shape to clownfish. And for my turtle, just to extend that, Sure, you could guess. I'm going to go with that crazy old shark. So if I run code, set up, play. Now I'm a shark going after fish, but the fish are all in the same plane and the shark is really small. Let's increase the size of that shark. I think I want to increase the size of everything just so I don't have to have so many, but make it look more like a game. So I will set the size for, oh, and that's still called turtle, which drives me a little crazy. I'm going to set the size of the shark to be 7. And I want to change the name of that breed. I don't want to be confused thinking that it's a turtle. So I will rename the turtle to be shark. Right? Now it should appear as shark down here, which I really like. And let's duplicate that set my size. Oops. Click it. Copy paste. Set the size of the other characters to four. I don't actually know how that's going to look. So I'll test my code. Run code. Set up. Play. I want my shark bigger. Shark to 13. Menacing number for a menacing shark. Set up. Play. Okay, so now the shark is bigger, but it looks like the shark is actually above the fish because it's bigger. And the fish are all look like they're just scooting around the bottom like flounders. So let's randomize where those appear vertically. Set my, for the other characters, I want to set my Z value. X is left and right. Y is forward and back. Z is up and down. So I want to set the Z, and of course we know random is under math. I want to set the Z to be between 0 and I could go, you can go up 100, that's the maximum. So let's try Random 100 means it'll put each time it creates a character, it's running this script and randomizing where that goes between 1 and 100. Set up. That didn't do what I expected. Let's go back down. I think I must have done something wrong. Set my Z to be random 100 on other characters. I want to save my project. I might need to refresh for the code to work. Run code, set up. There we go. Now you'll notice when I click play, the fish are all around. Now my shark can only go forward, back, left, and right, so I also need to add code to let the shark move up and down. 
So couldn't I just duplicate this whole code? Because I'm lazy. Copy, paste. It's appearing over here. I already have the up arrow and the down arrow. So what if we use, what else do we have to use? We have shift and control. I noticed that sh the shift key is above the control key. So what if I make the shift key move the shark up? And the control key move the shark down. Up by one, down by one. Now to really make that more dramatic, I'm going to use two. Up by two, down by two. Just so we can really see the effect. I don't need those other blocks. We're just dealing with up and down at this point. So I'm going to run code, set up, play. So I'm going to move. I can rotate with my left and right, forward and back with my up and down arrow. And then if I use control, like I'm sorry, shift, I can go up, and control, I can go down. But do you notice how when I go up, it's like the fish and the shark can't actually go to the top of the water. They can only go to a certain point, and then it's just like they hit this invisible barrier. So we need something else to sort of represent the surface of the water. This would be our next trick. How do you represent the surface of the water? Well, couldn't we use, oh look at that, if I go down past the terrain, I can actually go at a certain point, it looks sort of like, what, maybe the surface of the water? So what if we created another cube, let's make a breed for it, and let's call it surface. Cool. Surface. And go back to the world so I can create the surface object. It's probably going to have the same parameters as sky, so I'll select, copy, paste. Now I'm glad this happened. Notice I have to scroll back up because it always pastes code at the top, and it always pastes it to the right of whatever code is already there. Sometimes it's off to the side, and you have to scroll across. So I don't want it to be sky, I want this to be surface. And I, actually, I'm sorry, I really should have duplicated ground. I think that would have made it easier. I will put that down with ground and I'll just make the changes because I'm running out of time. So for uh, surface here, we want it to be a cube like we did with the ground. The color, I'm thinking it's the ocean, so I'm going to make it be green. Let's see, the bottom is lime. Maybe we, sh I, we do want it to be different from our green bottom of the ocean, though. So I do think blue would work well. Um, but I don't really see... All we have is sky blue and like dark blue. Let's try a dark blue and see how it looks. So we do want it to be big, but we probably don't want to go down 50. I think we may want to go up 50. Let's test that. Let's go up 50 instead. Run code. Set up. Play. Now when I go up, ah, so it looks like the fish can also sort of swim outside of the water. So I don't like that, but you know what I do like? Your shark could actually jump out of the water like a real shark by having it. So maybe I, the shark should be able to go a little bit higher than the fish. So the fish stay underwater, but the shark has the option of diving outside of the water. So instead of changing the shark, let's just change the fish. So instead of the, their Z being random 100, 
Let's make it random 95. Then I can run code, set up, play, go up. Got to adjust it a little bit more. There's still fish up there. That probably has to do with the fact that the fish are a certain size because the fish are bigger than one. So I think what that means is the random Z should be 90 or even 85. To play it safe, I'll do 85. Run code, set up, play. Now I go up as a shark. Still not high enough, so we'll restrict the fish even more so that I can still have that shark go up. Let's try 70. So even as a star logo master, I'm still doing a lot of back and forth. Set up, play, shift to go up. Maybe it needs to be as small as 50. I'm feeling lazy, so I'm going to go right to 35. Set up, play, shark swims up. So we do have a gap. So that was a little too much. I bet 50 will be the magic number. Am I right? Run code, set up, play, shift to go up. So there are a few on the surface that means we cut the difference to 45. Run code, set up, play. And that's much better. Still a slight gap, I can live with that. And notice the collision is still working. It's a harder game. And if I had more time, I'd show you how to fix the camera a little bit more so that you don't have that lag between when you get to the surface and you see the shark. But I'm afraid I've got just like a minute left. But couldn't you use the same technique for outer space, which is a couple quick changes. So instead of a shark, if I was, say, I don't know, a spaceship, and instead of clownfish, it was actually another kind of spaceship, spaceship one, spaceship two, and instead of random color, we made the those ones red, 200 is going to be a boatload of spaceships. I'll change that to 35. And instead of our surface being blue, maybe we don't need a surface because it's outer space. And instead of a sky dome being blue, couldn't we go to, I don't know, black? We probably don't even need that sky dome. And the ground we wouldn't need now, right? Let's see what that does. If we do run code, set up, play. Now I'm a spaceship that can go after other spaceships, but I don't like that green terrain. So the quick way to fix it is just change the color of the terrain. I'm not going to show you that because there's a skill card for doing it. You just use that stamp technique where you make a really big sphere, you stamp the ground black, and then it would be gone. But that would give you your outer space. Pretty cool, right?